after studying the periodic table, we recognize that elements are going to come together and they're going to form compounds. And that's really the exciting part of chemistry is forming these compounds. We recognize that these compounds must be electrically neutral. In order to be electrically neutral, then it's all about the electrons. Let's take a look. So here is an ion that's going to form. I have sodium here. And sodium, we said before, is a metal, so it wants to give up its electrons. So here is sodium with an electron here on this shell. It's going to get rid of this electron in order to become more like a noble. And we said before, nobles are stable because they have a full outer shell. So if sodium gets rid of this one electron, it now has this full outer shell, which we see over on this side, a full outer shell. Now this sodium is more stable. And being more stable means it's a 1 plus or a positive ion. It has one more proton than it does electrons. If we look here at fluorine, it too wants to be like a noble. In order to become like a noble, then it's going to take on one electron. Being like a noble, once again, means I have this full outer shell. So if it takes on one more electron, it's going to have a negative one charge, a negative ion, or an anion, and once again, this full outer shell. So ions we've discussed in great detail, and when Metals and non-metals come together. We said before they were going to form an ionic bond. There was one thing we didn't mention, this idea of a molecular ion, typically formed by the loss or gain of a hydrogen ion. So here's water. So I have H2, two hydrogens, and one oxygen, and there's an extra hydrogen here. And this itself is an ionic bond, but we call this thing a molecular ion. Altogether, it's a molecular ion. So hydronium ion is H3O+, has a positive one charge. So keep this in mind, we'll discuss more about this molecular ion later on during this unit. And finally, we have the covalent bond. The covalent bond is between two nonmetals. We said before that nonmetals want to hang on to their, to their electrons and they want to gather up more electrons. Well, when two nonmetals combine then, we're going to have a sharing of electrons, shared electrons in between. And here's an example of fluorine, once again bonding with another fluorine atom. So we have a covalent bond between two nonmetals. What we looked at so far is what's called Bohr's model of the atom. In Bohr's model of the atom, then, we're identifying the number of protons, the number of electron shells, and the number of electrons for each one of the atoms. So here's an example of hydrogen. It has one proton, one electron shell, and one electron on that shell. Here's helium. It has two protons and two neutrons, one electron shell, once again, because it's in that first row, and two electrons. If I look at silicon, Silicon has 14 protons, 14 neutrons, we could say. It has one, two, three electron shells. I find two electrons here in the first shell. I'll go ahead and load up the other electrons as well, moving these to the appropriate place on the next shell. And this is going to take a, a long time, and it's kind of boring to do, but you get the idea of what I'm doing here, so I'm just going to jump ahead. Boom, there it is. So now I've got it all mapped out. So I have my silicon with 14 protons, 14 electrons, and it has three shells because, once again, it's in that third period in the periodic table. So what I've shown here are all the electrons, all the proteins for these three atoms. But there's a simpler way to show the same information. What we're going to do is actually just show the most important electrons. The most important electrons are those found in the outside shell. Those electrons we actually call the valence electrons. So if I want to show the same kind of thing, I'll do so with what's called the electron dot structure or the Lewis dot structure. So let's do this for hydrogen. So I'm going to draw hydrogen here real quick. For Lewis dot, it becomes really simple. I just draw the H, that's the element symbol, and all I'm going to do is draw a dot, boom, and I'm done. So I'm showing here the valence electrons, which is one, for this element we call hydrogen. If I do helium then, the element symbol once again, and no, the colors don't matter. I could do it in black or red, doesn't matter at all. And I have two valence electrons, so once again, I'll just draw two valence electrons, boom, and boom, and I'm done. For silicon, once again, just write the element symbol, And I have one, two, three, four valence electrons. So I will draw those surrounding my silicon atom. So there it is. So the valence, the 
Lewis dot structure or electron dot structure is much easier to draw than Bohr's model of the atoms. We're going to stick with this one and it'll be a lot easier for us. Here we go. Let's try chlorine. So chlorine once again, valence electrons, I have seven. One, two, three, four. Notice I draw my electrons separate from each other until they have to pair up. I've got no more space here, so they have to pair up at this point. So five, six, seven. So there's my Lewis dot for chlorine. If I'm gonna do carbon, same idea. Carbon has four valence electrons, so I start drawing them out, all spread apart. One, two, two, three, and four. So there's my Lewis dot for carbon. As it turns out, if I go back to the periodic table, my best friend, it tells me a lot of information. So I look at each element in the first column. As it turns out, each element in the first column has one valence electron, all drawn here. And the Roman numeral above is one. Each element in the second column has two valence electrons. And once again, I have a Roman numeral two to signify that. For column 13, or Roman numeral three, each element has three valence electrons. So the Roman numeral actually tells me the number of valence electrons I'll find around that element. And finally, eight. I have eight valence electrons around all my nobles, eight being the complete outer shell situation. So to review, here we go once again. Valence electrons are drawn around what we call electron dot structures. They signify those bonds that are going to form. So as I look at chlorine here, I've got paired electrons and I have unpaired electrons. I have one unpaired here. In carbon, I have four unpaired electrons. So the number of unpaired electrons indicate how many bonds that this element can actually form. Krypton is a special situation. As you get into the heavier atoms, Krypton actually has 18 valence electrons in its outside shell. But we only usually draw eight electrons because those are actually further away from the nucleus than the other ten. So eight are still drawn around these bigger atoms. If I want to show a covalent bond with Lewis dot structures, here once again is fluorine, bonding with another fluorine. I have my seven electrons for fluorine drawn around this one and seven drawn around this one. And when I want to show them bonding, I simply draw a line in between. So here is my line in between the two fluorine atoms. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, so I'm sharing this one. And then on this side, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, once again. Let's draw diatomic bromine. So di, once again, meaning two. Here are two bromine atoms that are gonna bond together. And I'll draw in my Lewis dot structure. So here's bromine with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I've got one unpaired here, one unpaired here. So we'll draw a line in between these two to show that these are the two that are being shared. Notice here I have eight electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, around bromine, around this bromine as well, one, two, three, four, five, six, and we're sharing here two more, seven, eight. This is what's known as the octet rule octet meaning eight. So if I look at my final structure and I can count eight electrons around each one of the atoms, then I know I've done something correct. Let's take a look at hydrogen bonding together. So diatomic hydrogen. Hydrogen has just one valence electron. There they are. And so if I bond these together, I draw a line once again, joining these two electrons. Now I don't show eight electrons around this hydrogen because there's another rule called the duet rule. Hydrogen goes by the duet rule to be stable, just like helium. It just needs two electrons in that outside shell. That's the first shell. That's all it can hold is two electrons. So the duet rule is followed for this one. Let's take a look at water. Here's oxygen with its six electrons in its outside shell, six valence electrons. Two are unpaired. Here's hydrogen with one valence electron. So these will then pair up. This will pair with this hydrogen. And if I look around each oxygen, this oxygen atom, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, it takes care of the octet rule. And each one of these hydrogens then have one, two electrons around them, it takes care of the duet rule. 
So there's Lewis dot structure or electron dot structure. 